uh, here at Week of Diversity for the first time. All right, so we're about five minutes or so ahead of schedule, but I see Fernando is here. Uh, so maybe we can go ahead and start a little bit early for the Mentor Projects update. So let me go ahead and pull you on up here, Fernando. Hey there, can you hear me? Yes, sure can. Good. Great. For new, I believe. Thanks for being Good. here with us. Then, no problem. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Perfect. Can you see the, the slides and they are passing? Yes, I can see the slides. Great. Everything looks on my end. So I will jump off and hand it over to you for an update on our mentored projects program. Thanks so much. Perfect. No problem. Hey there. Uh, I'm Fernando. Um, I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and I also contribute to uh, Fedora um, in multiple areas. I have contributed in uh, SPAC a year, and now I'm also uh, co-leading the Mentor Projects Initiative together with uh, Smira. And we wanted to provide an update uh, during the Fedora uh, Diversity Week. So in essence, what is the Mentor Projects Initiative? Well, we have uh, several long-term and short-term goals. We have the long-term goal of uh, Interest and mentors will know what is expected of them entering a Fedora mentor project and have a smooth onboarding process. If you wonder what is a Fedora mentor uh, project, in essence, is uh, or Richie, Google Summer of Code, or other mentorship opportunities that involves Fedora project. In the past, this was happening in a regular basis, but with the time, we it started to be a little bit uh more complex and the docs were a little bit updated and we have difficulties getting contributors mentors and yeah applying to, to projects so we wanted to solve this with the initiative the idea behind it is that at the end everyone will know how to apply will know how to be a good mentor how to be a successful mentee and the project, uh, the the, uh, the mentorship opportunities, uh, will be like a, a yeah, very thing. Like it, it will happen frequently, and we will have people on board for organizing them. In the short term goal aspect, um, well, the idea is to provide uh, support to mentors and interns by providing a community a space for mentors to connect with each other. So that's what we have uh, currently in Matrix. The idea is that uh, they will be, they, they, they will have a space to have, have question, uh, to ask questions, uh, ask for support of other mentors if they are facing a challenging situation, uh, see how they can uh, overcome the challenges that they have and so on and coordinate together. Also, we are creating new role handbooks to onboard and guide participants. These role, uh, role handbooks and in essence um, documentation explaining what are the steps, what are the challenges expected, how could you do better, some resources that will help you, tools that you will need, and so on. The idea is to make the experience as smoother as possible for all the people involved. That means mentors, mentees, organization admins, and so on. And then uh, we plan to advocate these new role handbooks and community spaces. So if we do something, we want uh, it to be useful. And for that, it needs to reach the people that need them. And of course, get the feedback from them and apply it to our, um, apply it to, to our uh, documentation and the spaces. So that is, in essence, the, the, the goals that we have. But first of all, um, who, who is involved on, on the initiative? So we have the initiative leaders, uh, Smira Guel and, and me, Fernando. We also have uh, uh, the, our security sponsor, which is Jonah. 
And we have a lot of collaborators from the Federal Council and especially uh, Justin that uh, has been helping a lot. And okay, what happened already? So we started with this initiative in August last year. We meet for first time. We met for first time there and we started to discuss what we wanted to do and so on. Then around September, we started to define and distribute the tasks and we took the ownership of them and started to move them forward. And thanks to that, around November, we proposed the Federal Mentor uh, initiative to the Federal Project. In January, we applied to 2024 edition of Orichi and we were accepted and we also applied to Google Summer of Code but unfortunately we were not accepted. In February, we were uh, the initiative was officially approved by the Federal Council. And then uh, we started to do some mentors and um, past mentors and mentee interviews to get some feedback of the uh, process that we had and understand how we could improve it. So in April, it was the contributors deadline of uh, Outreachy and all the contributors applied by them. And the outreach season already started, which is really good because uh, what, what uh, we have heard from the mentors is that everything is going very well and we are very happy for the mentors and the mentees. Um, during June and August, we plan to create some SWAG and cool stuff for the people, mentors and mentees working on the Federal Mentor Project, like Urichi. And in August, we plan to do a showcase at uh, Federal Flock. And during September, the Urichi seasons should end. It's uh, the, the deadline. And by then, we plan to ask for feedback again, uh, work again on the role handbooks and all the documentation that we generated to apply the feedback. And um, the role handbooks should be completely ready by October, um, but they should be published before because the, currently we are already working on them and yeah, we plan to uh, publish them as soon as possible. So you might, you might think, how does, does it help DEI, uh, this mentor project? So, well, in first place, it provides a, pay, a paid opportunity for people from diverse backgrounds. That's uh, something very important. Uh, volunteering is, is very nice, but uh, there is a lot of people that cannot afford that because of uh, their personal situation. And it's very important that there is some space for this kind of, uh, some space for paid opportunities because they allow them to put the focus here and move the, their career forward on open source. Uh, doesn't necessarily be, need to be technical, um, career, but also on design, marketing, uh, documentation, whatever. And, and yeah, it's, it's an opportunity that it's not common in, in a lot of, uh, environments. Then the role handbooks, uh, with them, we, we will try to provide some help how to deal with communication and cultural difference, which are very common because when you have people from different areas of the world, they have different culture, different way of communicating. They have different infra infrastructure. And sometimes there might be some, uh, some conflicts and it's good to uh, have the necessary tools and support to work on them and overcome them properly. In addition, I think these uh, mentorship opportunities are very, uh, very good for mentees to learn how to overcome challenging situations because also uh, mentees, the pressure for them is usually uh, a lot, even though they, they, they will probably be nervous about the opportunity, they will, will try to do a good job and they usually put a lot of pressure on themselves. So it, it's, it's good that they have some uh, good mentor that help them to guide them during the whole process. Um, yeah, good enable them to do a, a good job and at the same time has a nice experience. And mentors will learn about other people's background because it's very common, especially 
in technology that you have uh, a very, very short sighted uh, experience. Like you only know how is the life of the people that is around you and they have a similar economic, economic situation and they, they, they share kind of the same subset of experience that you. But with these kinds of opportunities, you can learn what is the background of people from really different areas of the world with different uh, backgrounds, uh, different challenges. And it's a empathy uh, exercise that would probably help you to understand better um, what are the different challenges that people need to overcome during their life and probably will help you to improve uh, as a person and, and as a, probably as, as a professional in the industry that you work on. And well, in essence, uh, th this is all that, uh, that we have. So have you participated in a Fedora mentor project before? If so, we want your feedback. We want to understand what is missing, uh, how we could improve the process. Feel free to reach out on uh, a private message in, in Matrix if, if needed. Uh, here's my handle. And then also in, in the mentoring room. Uh, please feel free to join and tell us, hey, I participated as a mentee, mentor, project organizer, whatever. How could I help? Uh, I had this experience and, and it was bad. Uh, this was good. Uh, you should do this again. You should stop doing this. Whatever. So any questions so far? Me. I can come on up here with you and we can do some Q and A. So there's sure. a couple of questions that are popping up. So for folks who are following along, don't forget that you can add your questions to the Q and A in the matrix room thread. Uh, as well. So there is a thread with questions. You can drop them in there. But the first one, let's start with uh, Fernando. Why did you want to get involved with the mentored projects at Fedora? Or why do you, why do you personally care about our internship programs in Fedora? Right. That's a very good question. Uh, so in essence, uh, I started contributing to free software back then in 2016 and I was very lucky to participate in Google Summer of Code uh, two years. Um, it was a very, very good experience for me uh, in the personal, world, personal way and professional way. I learned a lot from my mentor. He was a really good mentor and I think it, it completely changed my life. After that, I was able to um, get a job. In this case, I, I got a job uh, at Red Hat. And it was kind of funny because I, I really knew some people of my team because of this mentorship opportunity, uh, because my mentor uh, empowered me to do some networking on the industry and so on. And for me, it was a completely um, win situation. Uh, like it, it was probably the thing that uh, ch changed my life for better uh, the most. Uh, so I think without these mentorship opportunities, I will have I will have not had the the opportunity to uh, meet some people and work with some people that are that they they are uh, really good professionals, and I learned a lot from them. Um, of course, you can always contribute to these projects uh, as as open source contributor as a volunteer, but in my case, I needed to, to have a job and this was the, 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 a, a huge limitation for me. And, uh, the paid internship helped me a lot because yeah, I was getting money at the same time doing what I wanted and getting a lot of experience that was very valuable later. And I think that Fedora is a very good place to uh empower this and yeah as someone did the work to help me uh, in the past now i would like to do the work to help them <laughs> in the future coming full circle that's a really beautiful answer fernando and you know i feel like it's really a great testament to the 
impact that powerful mentoring can have on someone in shaping their their career, or well, even personal and professional, really, you learn so much about, you know, I think beyond just the work, you learn a lot about the things that you're doing and the tasks and the project work, but you also learn a lot about like working together in a team of people and how you, uh, like how collaboration works and all these other kind of soft skills, things that can also kind of propel you forward in many other ways beyond just learning about how to do some sort of project or some kind of new technology thing too. So. I think it was a really beautiful yeah. answer about you know, why why mentoring, why Fedora Mentor Projects. So we'll keep going with the questions. We've got one. What do you think is one of the most rewarding parts of being a mentor? Oh, yeah, I have. Uh, so one, one cool thing that one of the most rewarding parts is that uh, at the end, the project is successful or something like that, but it, it isn't. I, I thought that before. But uh, recently, I heard from one of the mentees that uh, did the uh, um, outreach with uh, Fedora in 2021 uh, that she was uh, accepted at a master's uh, in a university that she wanted, and the um, outreach experience uh, helped her a lot to to be able to do that, and she was progressing in the professional uh in, in in her professional career and she was really grateful of the, all the mentorship opportunities so that was the most rewarding thing for me seeing that uh, a person is is progressing and moving forward and getting more opportunities thanks to uh the a good mentorship opportunity so the the, the thing is that for a mentee the mentorship opportunity if something that is mostly temporal, uh, at some point it will end. And that's 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 good. It's how it should be. Uh, one should not be all the time uh, doing mentorship opportunities, but more like the mentorship opportunity is uh, the ignition or the 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 boost to move forward to uh, yeah to a better. Or, or a more advanced uh, position in their career, like a, a junior position, or get into a college, or yeah, this kind of things. Great answer. I think then it looks like our last question. Uh, are there any mentorship plans or a roadmap to help community members get into the governance of Fedora? So if I might interpret this question a bit, you know, thinking about maybe like even how you as a, are as a member of the Fedora Council leading in a co-leading an initiative with Smira, I, I guess what kind of pathways uh, or you know, plans or roadmaps are there to help people explore like getting into this governance pathway? And maybe if there's not one, maybe you could share what your experience was in kind of going down that pathway. Yes, so in essence, this is a little bit so the scope of uh, mentoring inside Fedora for in, uh, commu already community members uh, and so on, it's uh, a little bit out of the scope of, of the mentor project at this point. But uh, I, yes, I can share my, my experience. So in essence, um, I initially uh, presented myself at the manager elections um, and it, it didn't work. Uh, like I got elected, but uh, I, I was not sure how to handle it and how to do a, a meaningful participation. Um, but uh, later on, uh, uh, Justin contacted me about, hey, I noticed that you are interested in, in mentorship opportunities. What if we do something? And we, we, we move forward. One of the ways that I learned of how to participate in governance in Fedora that I didn't know before um, is with uh, in, um, community initiatives. So in essence, if you have an idea about, hey, how could you improve Fedora project? And this idea uh, aligns with Fedora strategy, you can present an initiative. The initiative needs to follow a specific format. It's uh, on the documentation. If you search for Fedora initiatives, and 
this um, the, this this initiative should allow uh, Fedora to move forward to reach their uh, goals um, on their strategy. And in essence, uh, I think uh, after that, uh, all the people from the council were very helpful. Uh, they helped me a lot to understand how things work, uh, which is not easy sometimes. And yeah, they put a lot of attention of, uh, that I, I was uh, being, I was very welcome there. And they, they, uh, they made sure that I, I was having a great experience. So that's very nice. Um, yeah. Once uh, you have the, the the initiative proposed, they, in a sense, provide you some feedback and you do some adjustments, and then they uh, do a voting. And if it gets accepted, uh, there are continuous sessions of checking out if things are moving forward the way it should or not, and so on. But yeah. I think there is more space for improvement in onboarding or mentoring inside Fedora community. Like, for example, from people that is already part of the, of the council to mentor other people of how to uh, engage more with the council. Or if you are part of Fedora Infra, mentor, be a mentor of, uh, for them and, and try to get more people involved in Fedora Infra. And this apply for documentation, marketing, or whatever, all, all the groups. And I think we should do some work about it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I feel like one of the challenges is that, you know, in Fedora, we're usually a pretty welcoming group of people, but sometimes making those first steps are the hardest challenge. And knowing like which way to go and how to, you know, find your way around and navigate, I think those can be some of the tricky parts with like finding your way. But, you know, I feel like you know, we do have some amazing people who do mentoring in the community. And I think that's definitely helped. Uh, you know, actually, I, I thought I'll have to do a little bit of a shout out here to some folks. Like, you know, we really do have this amazing mentoring culture and community in Fedora. Uh, you know, I can think of people like, you know, for example, Marie Norton, who was a outreachy, well, a pre outreachy intern in 2013 or 2014 for Fedora badges and you know, her whole transition into getting into working in Red Hat and doing Fedora things, but also her role as being a mentor with so many different interns. Um, we have that kind of trend of our, our interns and people who get involved and also kind of stick around too. Like Chris, for example, who helped be a huge part of this event uh, was an outreachy intern with Fedora and actually with Marie uh, last year, along with Roland Taylor who is also doing a lot of help and work around some of the design end of things in Fedora Badges. We've got outreachy interns who are with us right now, like Rosalind and Tosin, as well as Adrian, who's another intern helping, you know, drive a lot of the kind of things that we're doing in the community now. We have people like Nikita Tripathi, Samira Goel, who are also uh, former outreachy interns who are doing quite a bit with Fedora today as well. Like Samira is also helping Coley Initiative, having been a uh, outreachy intern with Fedora in 2020. Uh, you yourself are an intern, you know, past intern and kind of had that exposure to the community. So like those things, to me, it's like, it's really, really amazing and special what we have in our community. And even with those challenges of like, you know, getting in started and trying to figure out the right way and how to participate, at the end of the day, we've got that strong mentoring culture. So even if sometimes things aren't always clear, we usually always have people who really want to try to help out and bring people along. That's a big part of our mentor projects experience and the culture that we do. We drive through mentoring in the project. Yeah, this is pretty nice. And I, and I think uh, for internal mentorship, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, even though if you are a part of uh, Fedora, it's really huge. And if you are part of uh, one section of Dura, uh, it, it, it is probable that you don't know the people involved in another group because there is a lot of people in Fedora and it's really hard to know all of them. And having a connection, having a mentor, even though you are familiar with Fedora, even though you're experienced, might not be useful maybe for a technical mentorship opportunity, but uh, as a connection thing. It's the same way that uh, joining a party when you don't know uh, the people in the party is might be overwhelming and uncomfortable. 
but if you know at least someone and that person helps you to introduce to the others, the situation might be easier and, and less uncomfortable. And then you can be on your own and yeah, develop yourself. But that initial step of getting someone say, hey, this is Fernando. He does whatever in a community. And now he's interested in opening Fedora Infra. So, hey, why don't we show him uh, what we do? And then it's it's a first introduction step that might be really helpful. For sure. Well, Fernando, thank you so much for coming up and spending thank some you. of your time on Friday to talk about our mentor projects programs. And it's been great to have you. Thank you very much. Part of the speaker panel for this event. Thank you. All right. So we are at, uh, well, well, so many time zones. Uh, we are at, let's see, about 11.50 UTC, uh, or uh, almost 2 o'clock for folks in Europe. So we are actually about to come up on a break here in the schedule. So we're going to be taking a short pause on the broadcast. We'll uh, go offline for a little bit. So this is uh, for a lot of folks now getting into lunchtime or maybe some dinner time here. So we'll take a quick break, freshen up, grab a bite to eat, or maybe if you're just waking up and joining us, grab your cup of coffee. And we will be back in about 40 minutes from right now. So that is going to be, I believe that'll be 12 UTC or 2 p.m. Europe or nah, 8.30 U.S. Eastern. So yeah, definitely probably cup of coffee time. Uh, but we will go and take a quick break and we will be back. So do come and uh, come on back to the Matrix room or follow along on YouTube. We will be back in about 40 minutes and have another great session lined up after this. We've got a panel discussion with Amita Sharma, Dipisha Burse, Benny Vasquez, and Dipal Siddharth on DEI in open source. So stay tuned for some excellent content. Uh, we will be right back after this break. Get your coffee, get you some lunch, and we'll see you in a little. 